All right, moving right along here. In our last video, we created a little um, comment, I guess you could say, in our console. We debugged to make sure everything's working right. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to look at UI elements, okay? So what is a UI element? It's a user interface element. And when we're talking about UI, we're talking about things like menus and on-screen on text, uh, images, it could be a menu, it could be whatever you want. UI is something that is going to be static that's on screen that we can pretty much interact with. Um, yeah, or, or we can use te uh, code to interact with. So in order to create UI, it's quite simple. Uh, what we're going to do, first of all, is you'll notice right now we are still looking at our game that we had built and it's in 3D view. We can tell it's 3D view because we can kind of look around the scene and, and move it around as we would expect it to, to move. When we're working on UI, we are going to switch to 2D mode. You'll see it up in the top right corner here. We got 2D. We're going to click that to switch the scene to two dimensions. And in order to add UI elements, we're going to go up to the game object menu like we've done with everything else. And there's an entire menu for UI within that menu, okay? So if we were going to put in a picture, that would be an image. If we're going to put in some text, there's your text. Um, a raw image is like, um, it could be like a rectangle, like an actual um, full screen color or something. Um, you can use a picture there as well. Um, and as we go through these, more of the, these are again more of menu items and stuff. We'll get into that later. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a text element, okay? So we're going to create some text, click that, and what you're going to see happen over here on your scene is automatically um, Unity will create a canvas because the way that Unity handles UI elements is it puts it onto a canvas. And we now have a text object with a TMP, which is the Text Mesh Pro, which is what they've added for editing. Um, I'm going to call this Text Object Total Pickups. All right, let's call it that. I hope that's not going to cause a problem. I'll put a space in there. Okay, and you'll notice that we don't see anything. Nothing's been added. Um, that's because we're only seeing a portion of our canvas. So we actually have to double click our canvas to see our entire canvas. This is basically the resolution of our screen right now. And you'll notice that total pickups is this text right here. Now I've gone ahead and stylized it a little bit, not very much, but what I'm using here, I can use the move tool, I can basically, you know, move this text around wherever I want, okay? Um, whatever tool you decide to use is up to you. Uh, this rec tool actually works pretty well for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few options along the right hand side with this object selected. So the text that this displays. You can't just go in here and type. You have to put it here. Okay, so you'll see this inside of this Text Mesh Pro editor. We're going to put total pickups colon zero. Because right now at the start of the game we're not going to have any pickups. And in order for this to actually fit, we could grab the corner, the rectangle, and enlarge it. Or a little bit further down, we got some options here. We can change the font type, the font style, uh, whether it's bold or regular, the size of the font. Auto size is kind of a nice feature because the font will change to whatever size your box is. That's okay. Um, and we're going to just put this down in the corner somewhere. And follow along with me here because... It was really difficult to read when it was just white for me anyways. So if we scroll down further, we've got more things that we can choose from. Things like the alignment, um, both um, ver uh, horizontally and vertically. Um, and then down here, you will see a little bit further down, you have to scroll down, um, something that says underlay. All right, and underlay is Unity's weird way of saying shadow. All right, I don't know why they just didn't use drop shadow, but if you click that and expand it, 
you can change the size of the shadow. They use dilate, so how big the shadow is and the softness of the shadow. It makes it much easier to read the text over your, you know, when it's placed over your uh, your your game with a shadow, as you're going to see in a moment. All right, um, and let's hit the play button just to show you how that's going to work. If we hit play now, there's our UI element, which is a static object on the screen. It's not working yet but it's nicely positioned where we had it in the bottom left corner. Now, one thing that I can tell you from experience with games and UI elements that are made in Unity, they are notorious for moving or scaling off the screen when you play on a monitor with a different resolution. So one way you can fix that is by going to your canvas object and remember that your canvas object holds all of your UI elements. So with the canvas selected, over here on the right hand side where it says canvas scalar, change it from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. Trust me, this is very important. And here where it says screen, uh, screen match mode, change the match to 0.5 okay so that is 50 percent and again just trust me on this this will work on nearly any monitor display if you have this set for your game okay so canvas uh, scale with screen size and match 50 percent so when we play it again you're not going to see much of a difference. It might be in a slightly different spot, but it's very, very close to the same spot. All right. So now let's do some coding here to actually make this work. All right. And this is this is a little weird. Um, they definitely made it more difficult in the later version of Unity. Uh, it used to be a lot easier. But I'm going to show you how we can access this text to update every time we pick up an item. All right, so let's go down into our scripts. We're going to right click. We're going to create a uh, C sharp script. And I'm going to call it total pickup. All right, total pickup. And this is going to be a little, um, like I said, an object that's going, or not an object, a script that's going to update our total pickups text. So let's go into that and let's look at how to do that. All right. Uh, okay, I don't know why pickup objects opened up. Oh, I see. It went on to my other display. There we go. So there's total pickups. Now, um, again, because this is a score that's going to update, it needs to be within update. We don't need the start uh, method in this case again. We're going to get rid of it. And we're going to make a couple of um, variables. And the first one is going to be a public variable. It's going to be an integer and is going to be called total pickups. All right. And this is going to be our counter for how many pickups we've picked up. And we're going to also create a public. This is the weird part. This is going to be our text editor, okay? Well, it's going to um, update the text. It's going to be a TM Pro object, which is for the text mesh pro dot text mesh pro GUI, which is graphic user interface or a user graphic user interface. Okay, so there it is. And then the name of this variable. So in this case, I'm going to call it pickups text. Oops. Pickups text. All right. And so let me explain what we did here. We created a public variable called total pickups. We also created another public variable that is basically a part of this text mesh pro feature that Unity has that's going to um, access the text is going to be called pickups text. All right. 
So now let's actually update that. So the very first thing we need to do, if you remember from before, we have to access the pickups variable that we created in the global variables document. All right. And in order to put that into something, we created this um, variable called total pickups. So I'm going to put total pickups equals global variables dot pickups. Okay. So let me explain. We are setting this variable that we just created to match whatever the global variables is at right now. The sorry, the pickups variable that's inside of global variable script. Whatever it's set to right now in this class, we are setting it to that number right now. And then what we're going to do is we are going to tell it to use this variable pickups text dot text. Okay, so this is actually going to affect the text of this object. We're going to hit press equals. This is similar to how we did it before. We're going to put quotations. We're going to put total pickups. This is a string. Okay, so this is what the text is going to display, total pickups. And then if you remember from before, we're going to add total pickups. Okay, because again, total pickups is the number from up here. Okay, but here's a little, here's something you have to do. And this is, this is always been, it's always been this way. You can't just plunk a variable into a string object, okay? Because this is a text object, it's considered a string object. And variables that, sorry, like integers and floats don't work with string objects. So what you have to do is you have to type dot to string bracket, bracket, semicolon. Okay, so let me explain this, this code again. It's not very complicated, hopefully, but I will explain what it's doing. We are creating a public integer called total pickup. So it's a whole number. We are creating a public variable that is a type of uh, text mesh editor object called pickups text. And on update, so every time a frame is ran, total pickups will check to see what the global variable's pickup value is at. And then it will set the text of pickups text, which we know is this type of object, to equal this string, total pickups, with a colon and a space. Again, this could have been whatever we wanted with the addition of total pickups here being converted to a string. So if it's a two, then it'll say total pickups two. All right, so it should update automatically. Then we're gonna save this. And all we have to do with this that we just created, this total pickups, is we attach it to our total pickups text. Okay, so you could select the total pickups text and you can just drop it into here. All right, it should it should attach. It, it's weird, it doesn't attach near the bottom. It'll attach somewhere up here because it can't, for whatever reason, go under the, um, the material. All right, so it'll, it'll show up right here. And because these are public variables, you will see them show up here. So it's telling us total pickups is zero right now. It'll also tell us that the pickups text is set to none right now. And that's because it's, it wants to know what object it is targeting to change the text. This is going to be very common, especially in upcoming tutorials. Sometimes you have to tell Unity what this object is going to be. And so we know the pickups text is going to be this object, 
that we called total pickups, this text box. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this object from this menu. We're going to drop it onto here. All right. And so what that tells Unity is that the pickups text is going to go into this total pickups that we called it, this box right here. Let's test that out. Let's play. All right, and there we go. You can see that the numbers now update as we pick up objects. We still have the console telling us as well, but nobody will ever see the console when you play the game. They'll only see the UI elements. The console is just for us to troubleshoot to make sure things are working. And that, my friends, is a very basic intro to UI and how you would access text dynamically from your scripts. Again, we'll get into more complex stuff as we go. Hopefully you found that helpful. All right, so stay tuned for the next one.